Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we want to check out a little bit how we're going to set up our other poses. So inside of our scene here, in the design, we had included a few poses um, such as the head tilted up, tilted down, uh, and all of the other angles as well, uh, excluding the side view because the side view will be easy enough to do uh, using those other ones. Um, without necessarily applying just a rotation because that would look a little bit too mechanical. So basically what I wanted to see with you guys is how to set your different poses across the timeline, what you need to make sure that you have depending on what your plans are for uh, the rest of the scene and how you'll be using it at the animation stage. So um, deactivating this here, I just brought up this little chart that I wanted to show you guys. Um, so let's say that we have over here the different head positions for our character. Um, depending on whether or not you're planning on using pose copier, master controller, or just regular templates, this is going to affect how uh, your scene is going to be and just how much detail you want to put inside of it. Um, if you're going to be working solely with the pose copier, probably a good idea to have just the regular poses, so front, which we already have, uh, creating the head looking down, we'll have the little head looking up, and the same goes for all the other views, we'll have the regular quarter front, and finally the head looking down, and for the side view, of course, we'll have the head looking up, regular side view and the head looking down. So these are going to be our main poses for, um, for using the pose copier. It's not very useful to have too many poses in there because then you will start having a very complex setup. You could do it, but you're probably going to end up with a scene that's going to be something like over a thousand frames to include all the in-betweens of these different poses. Um, to make sure that all of these are visible inside of the timeline. And if we throw a lip sync in there, that's gonna make things even longer because the pose copier does not create any new information. Um, so it will take the pose as it is inside of your template or inside of your timeline and basically just copy that over. So either uh, you have many different frames or you keep it to a limited amount and have perhaps one breakdown between each of these poses to add a little more variety. So you would have the in-between to those poses, the one in-between. So basically the breakdown positions of what we had, and you would need to create them for these different poses that kind of face uh, each direction in there. Now, this is for the pose copier. When it comes to the master controller, uh, the master controller basically will give you access to, uh, to all of these poses once you create them. It also has the possibility of creating auto interpolation between these poses. However, as you've seen before using the automatic interpolation in between these different poses, um, you'll sometimes get some pieces popping on top, uh, some pieces appearing uh, out of nowhere or shifting or transitioning in ways that aren't necessarily great, even though we've tried to do the best we can with this rig. Um, so with the master controller, you're probably better off having a few more poses because what's going to happen is the master controller will be based on all of these poses, kind of creating a grid. So if you wanted to position your character in a way that would look uh, kind of in the middle of all these, it will take the position from all four of these pieces and try to position it in a way that makes sense, which may not always be the best case scenario. So for the master controller, you could go inside of your timeline and make sure that you have things like the transition between these two frames over here and have let's say about the same amount as we do over in the transition of the full body. So um, pretty much for the head, we already have 
this transition done, right? We've done this uh, and this one as well in the regular transformation. So we would need ideally to do the same thing over between the head looking up in all of the views that we have here and ideally as well, of course, the back poses uh, following up here. So I'm not showing them over here, but it's just to kind of explain the, uh, the main idea behind it. So the more details you have on these different frames, and if you create those as well in here, so the transition, perhaps 10 frame over here, 10 frames over here, doing the interpolation in that middle pose where we take the closest frames to those different poses will become now much easier to automatically interpolate what's going to be over here. So um, you don't want to have too many details uh, in like you don't want to start creating these different frames inside of that grid here. You can test out the interpolation, see how it's looking. That's usually a good idea. So if you have your uh, pose over here and you want to try to transition from this one into this one, uh, try it out. Copy that pose, copy this one, try interpolating it, see how it works. And that's usually going to give you a good idea of whether or not this auto interpolation will work. And if not, could be a good idea to add a few additional poses in there. Now, if you're using uh, not the master controller, not the um, not the pose copier, and you're just going for the uh, old school method of just having all of your frames over here and copying and pasting them into the uh, into your animation scene, so that works too. The old school method, you would just go over here, copy your pose, whether it is the full body, whether it is just the head, you would open up the timeline, copy the head pose, and go and paste it into the animation model over here. Um, so that would work as well. Um, basically, you're going to have what you want for that situation. You will be limited by the amount of poses that you have in here. So the more you have, uh, the more possibilities you have of copying and pasting those poses over into your animated scene. And of course, there's always the option of interpolating. So dosing everything, seeing how much you want to complexify the entire thing, not too much, not too little, depending, of course, always on the project scope and what you have, which brings us back to our first topic that we initially discussed. So um, basically at this point, in the next few topics, we'll be discussing how to set up the pose copier, We'll see how to set up the master controller so that you guys can get a better idea of just how we set up the scene for those things more specifically. But for now, we can just look at these general aspects, perhaps create our poses and leave those over here for now. Let's create one pose per 10 frames. We can do automatic interpolation if you'd like. You can adjust a few details and keyframe uh, and bake the keyframes that we had uh, inside of these different poses here, um, but we don't want to go into too much details yet. Let's go and have a look at the next few things that we can do, uh, setting up the pose copier, master controller, and from there we can adjust a little bit and add more details if need be.